So here we are, another episode of Pedalbox, and we are starting in the dark. Unfortunately, we made a critical mistake, finished filming the previous episode about an hour and a half ago, confidently started tidying everything away, decided we're going to go in where it's warm, do some CAD so that we can mount our filter. Now, this is our filter housing. It is a three inch to three inch um, housing with a cone filter inside, basically. And though it looks like carbon fiber, I'm pretty certain it's not, although I haven't actually checked. Now, it comes with a bunch of flexi tube. Unfortunately, being three inch tube, it doesn't work because the math is slightly over three inches. It's either 78 or 81 mil, which is what, three and an eighth or three and a quarter inches. And I made the opening in our roof scoop exactly the same size as the MAF. So none of the mounting kit that comes with this is of any use to us. Fortunately, we found some adapters. So this one, assuming I get it around the right way, fits on to one end and this end just, and I use the term very, very loosely, fits onto the top there. And you can see our MAF actually sits reasonably parallel with the roll bar. So this down tube coming off the uh, roll bar down to the suspension turrets, this is what we're going to mount it to with a two-piece bracket that will essentially clamp around the filter. Now at the bottom end, we have another one that sits down here, which has a clip on at the moment. And to join the two, we have a piece of three inch pipe. Now, unfortunately, this is three inch exhaust pipe. This is stainless steel. I would use aluminium like the rest of the system, but I can't buy this much aluminium tube. I can buy very, very short pieces, but nothing the right length for what we need, unless I buy a meter. And I'm not buying a meter of three inch tube for all of about, I don't know, it's got to be about six inches, something like that. So we have a plan. This one, this pipe fits right down inside this elbow and it basically fits all the way up to the almost the inner apex of the uh, of the corner and the clamp is on here as a marker so this then fits onto the math and you can see these pipes now align quite nicely now the other thing i forgot to order was a three inch to three inch silicon hose uh, adapter just to go on here, just a straight piece to fit over the end. And the reason this band is sat so far down, we're going to use this as a marker, cut off about an inch and a half of the silicon elbow from this end and move that up and use it to join the top. And once we've got those in, then we can start taking measurements. We can design and print the bracket that will hold this onto the um, roll cage and that will be it done. And it will be glorious because that will be the last part of the breathing system of this engine actually installed which i've been looking forward to and collecting bits for for quite some time so let's get this off cut this and get it fit up So here are the component parts to finish our intake. Now I put one of these bands that came in the kit on this end because it's actually quite wide. So I'm hoping it will be able to pinch it onto both the um, filter housing and our piece of tube because we don't necessarily have enough, um, enough pieces to do it any other way. Kind of the story of the last few days has, has been, we don't actually have the parts we need to finish this in its entirety, but never mind. So that's our filter pipe work done. We don't have enough Jubilee clips to actually fit it all together. It's not a problem. This is all coming off again anyway, but from here we can take the measurements we need to make a little bracket that holds this in place. And although it is actually quite firm and it, it, it really holds in place quite nicely, we want to make sure that it's not going to hit on the edge of the, the, um, the down bar at the back, partly because we don't want it doing this, because that would be really, really annoying to listen to. But also we don't want this rubbing through the plastic because the steel tubing will always win, should always win against whatever material this is, be it faux carbon fiber or, or, or what I suspect is actually just plastic. One way or another, 
this will lose. So we want to make sure that this is in place firm enough that it doesn't just rub itself away and get a big hole after the filter and ruin a bunch of stuff. So we'll take the measurements, go and 3D print something, and hopefully in the morning we'll be able to mount it up. Well, we did get our CAD done last night and the bracket to hold the air filter in place in the engine bay is printing. It's printing really, really slowly though. We spent a lot of this morning watching it print and it turns out it's definitely, it's still got a few hours left. Um, we were in there watching it as much to make sure everything was fine as as an excuse to not be out here in the minus two degrees Celsius weather. It's just not a fun temperature to be working on metal. But anyway, we're back out now. We've decided we can't lose the whole day watching it print. So until that's done, we're going to work on finishing off a few other bits. Now, in the spirit of trying to finish bits rather than start whole new projects on the car, we're going to come back to another loop that's been left languishing for quite a long time. We're going to finish up the front end of the cooling system. So on the passenger side of the car, we've got the radiator. I can't remember if that's the inlet or the return, but we've got that hose all buttoned up. That's fully connected all the way back to the engine. But this side we left for a very, very long time. Now, originally, I think the reason we left it was because we knew that sooner or later we'd probably have to go through uh, this scoop that we hadn't yet built when we were first building it. So we were thinking, okay, well cool, once the scoop's in, then we'll cut the hole in it and send the pipe through. But now that it's all in, we've kind of realized that putting the hole in the scoop is going to be relatively tricky to get in the right place because the pipe's going to be going through at an angle, which means it has to be like an oval hole, which in most places would be okay. We've done similar things on the intercooler holes at the back. The problem is because this is meant to be taking in like outside air and it's going to be full of rainwater and splashes and everything else, we would actually want the hole around the pipe to be sealed. And we've basically come to the conclusion we're not going to be able to match the hole around the pipe accurately enough for it to seal at all. So we're going to go back to an old abandoned plan and just send it out through the side here into the wheel well and loop it back in where the pipe's just going to go directly through the metal. It's going to be circular holes that we can tolerance really quite nicely and it's also out of the airstream so we don't actually have to seal it as well anyway. So it makes it both easier to seal at all and also less critical to seal it right, which is a double win. So we've uh, gone through all of our boxes of bits of uh, metal pipes and hoses and everything and we figured out the contraption that it's going to take to get it off of the uh, outlet on the bottom of the radiator out through the sidewall here and then to double it back and rejoin into the existing hose in the front of the car. So hopefully we can get all of that together relatively quickly. So if you look down into the wheel arch from here, I've engineered a worst case scenario. The suspension is currently in full droop because we've lifted the body up and as the suspension droops, the wheel sort of comes in a bit as it lowers. So the wheel's as inboard as it's ever gonna get and I've disconnected the steering arm so I can turn the wheel, I can put more lock on the wheel than the steering would ever be able to put on. So this is the absolute worst that the mechanism could possibly allow. Now, as you can see, there's loads and loads of room around the tire. And in fairness, we did know this the first time around. We had the suspension and wheels and everything on before we ever started building the radiator. So we did know that at the time. But what put us towards running the pipe through the car rather than out into the wheel well was we thought that sealing the pipe where it came back into the, into the car behind here would be tricky, which obviously it's also tricky sealing it in a duct. So that ended up no win either way. And the other, the other thing that put us off it was the uh, big metal U-bend that we had. So we came out on a silicon bend and then we uh, big, had a big metal U-shape coming around. Ha had an outer diameter of something like eight inches or something. So it came a fair way out into the wheel well and it actually hit the lower suspension arm when the wheel was in compression, which obviously wouldn't do. The silicon contraption that we've come up with is a lot more compact though, so we've solved that problem. So this is the contraption we've come up with. It's a couple of bits of the silicon hoses that we'd bought before and some rubber bits that we've salvaged from various other VWs and Audis that we've dismantled here. The first piece is the 90 degree elbow that you can see on the radiator at the minute. That's gonna flip over this way, 180 degrees, come out through a hole on the side, connect onto here, where it doubles back and necks down through this contraption and comes back out roughly the same place that we always had it before. Uh, we might have to shorten this piece here a little bit depending on how it all measures up, but we'll figure that out once we start cutting some holes. Well, that's finally done. A bit of a saga compared to what we expected. We thought the hole saw would just go through nice and easy. It turns out the hole saw that we've got, like every other hole saw we've ever tried to use and they've tried to use, uh, was garbage. It's made of what may as well be chocolate. And the minute we tried cutting through it, all of the teeth just rounded over. They didn't like wear down. They actually just went blunt and you can see the metal sort of mushroomed on the tips of them. It did at least manage to scrape off the paint in a circle. So we had a guide 
uh, that we could use to drill a bunch of holes out to give us a uh, to give us the sort of edge of the hole. Tidied it up with a, with the uh, die grinder, and then we put some of our little rubber edging strip. The same stuff we've used in so many other places around the edge, just to protect the uh, to protect the hose a bit. So if it does vibrate and catch anything, it's a rubber on rubber edge, so it shouldn't uh, shouldn't wear anything out. In my left hand, I've got the other half of the contraption that I showed you earlier. This is connected uh, to all of our onboard coolant lines. So that's actually plumbed in all the way to like where the fuel tank is and further back the car from there. And the part that's missing here is this little elbow just sits on the front of the hard line there. If I get that down, rotate it around, you can see that matches up to our radiator outlet quite nicely. Um, we are going to have to cludge it a little bit today. We don't actually have a piece of 38 mil hard line to go in there. So we're going to do something a little bit dirty just to sort of hold it together while we order the right parts in. Now the clutch is fairly simple, it's another smaller piece of silicone, just fits in there in the same way that a metal hard line would. Yeah, and that's holding together pretty well. There's a bit of wobble in it, but it's not enough to... Yeah, it's not really going anywhere very far, it's not going to rub on anything at least. It might, just, it might like contact that diagonal upright, but once we've got the um, inner wheel latch cover in, Obviously this will be sitting in another rubber gasket and holding it in place there, so I think we're pretty much good. And with everything at the front of the car done, it's time to finish the episode where we started it with the bracket that holds our intake in place. Once again, it is dark. This took about 17 hours to print in total, and that might seem like a long time, but actually there were some fracture points that really shouldn't have been in there. I don't think SketchUp is really meant for designing this kind of piece. So we can put the pipe on, to the MAF end. Now our single band to try and join the two pieces together hasn't quite worked but it'll do for now and this is the bracket that we made. It has a 44.5mm um, opening on this side to go around the tube, it has two little pieces and basically it just has a pin that sits between the two. Now you can see the offset is, well sorry I'll put it around that way, the offset is fairly severe it was meant to sit like this, but there were various other parts that, as I say, broke off with some hidden geometry and planes. So to pinch those two together, we are temporarily just using a nail, mostly because this is now very much version one and we're gonna print another one up. And this fits around the bracket like that. Now this should hold the intake at about 12 and a half degrees and the bolt just drops through and if all goes well I don't drop this nut down into the engine bay. <laughs> I assure you that wasn't planned. Chris is going to furnish me with another one and I am going to lose the gloves. So for a version one, what have we learned? Well, the geometry on this isn't quite as nice as it should be. And actually this um, adapter housing, that go this adapter hose that goes onto the MAF housing wants to be shortened by about half an inch because you can see it's not quite sitting in line like it should be. So we need to make a couple of adjustments. But otherwise, the actual angle that this holds at, that 12 and a half degree um, twist between the two alignments is about right. That, that fits really quite nicely. We might need to move this a little bit further over. I uh, spaced it off the roll cage by 5mm uh, and I think that was probably a little bit generous. It probably wants to be a bit less and really we should brace all the way across the outside edge of here and design it in a better program. So thanks very much for joining us on this very, very chilly evening and sticking with us whilst we cobbled this episode together. We were planning on trying to address the handbrake problem for the IVA. We're fairly certain we're going to need an actual mechanical handbrake to deal with that, which will operate the normal mechanism on the rear calipers. Uh, and we have two handbrake levers, one from the A3 and one from the TT that we've sort of taken apart across the course of building this and I can't find either of them, so we're going to have to do that another time. But we have got a lot of other work done, which is really, really nice. And if you'd like to help us potentially buy another handbrake cable, uh, sorry, handbrake lever, you can go to patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show, where you can support us from as little as a dollar a month. Uh, if you'd like to buy hats like this one I'm wearing, which might not be the right way around at the moment, uh, you can go to shop.pedalbox.show, where you can also get a discount on the merch if you are a patron. So you get a, um, an increasing discount depending 
depending on the Patreon tier that you're at. So if you're going to buy some merch, you might want to go and be a patron first to get some discount. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, check us out on all of the usual social media things. And once again, we will see you on another episode when it might be a little bit warmer. It's basically not crept above minus two all day in the shadow of the house, and I'm not thrilled about that. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.